Hi, good morning. At last, some crochet. Apologies to all you guys who follow me on the crochet. It's been doll mad recently. Obviously, because I had dolly con, I was making all dolly things, and then I was reviewing all dolly things, etc., etc. But yes, I have a lot of crochet in here at least preparing us up towards Halloween and Christmas but this one's not linked to either of these during this time when I was making dolly items I actually made something for my son's birthday it was a bit of a joke present and he thought it was really funny so it came out really well and it's so cute I had to share it and this is what it is a goose uh, you could call it a duck if you want I don't know I think I tried to make it look more goosey because it's got a longer neck see if you can see it a little bit better it is really cute. It is done in a double knit yarn. It is an amigurumi style. Quite a simple pattern to follow. And don't forget, I'm in UK terms. So if you need a conversion chart, grab one before you get started. You can find them online. Oh, most good crochet magazines or books will have them in as well. I was really pleased with them. He's really cute. And as I said, very, very simple. You will need some stuffing. I've got safety eyes. You don't need to use safety eyes. Please remember the age of the gifter gifter the person who gets the gift even is going to be if I'm going to make something for a much younger person I will actually embroider features on rather than use beads or safety eyes even though they do call them safety eyes I'd still rather not risk it because you know young children do put things in their mouths I think it, it, most of the items are more of a collector's thing and a lot of people have them and pop them on their shelves for them to have a look at which is sort of quite cute I do like it I know that's what my son does if I've made him something so we're going to make this little one my throat is a little bit croaky. I have some water ready. Uh, hopefully it's not going to disappear. I've absolutely no idea why it's like this. It just does it occasionally. So we're going to do our little, little crochet goose here, top down. So I will see you in a moment. There will be patterns available, don't forget, as well on my website. I'll try and get the pattern up as soon as the video goes up. Sometimes that doesn't happen, so you might have to give me a day. But I will put a link on the actual video the second that there is a actual hard copy for you to print off. And like I said, they're available to purchase with my other patterns on my website. So I will see you in a moment. Top down and we'll get on with this little ghost. See you in a moment. So here we are with our cute, cute little goose. I'm really pleased with him. I just... I don't know, I decided to do it for a bit of fun, as I mentioned, and as I got going, he just developed, so I was really pleased how he came out. So this is the yarn I am using, this is just bog standard, these are actually style craft yarns, just a double knit yarn. Again, if you need that with conversions, don't forget to sort that out as well. Different yarns are slightly thicker than others. Now these are the eyes I have used, I am not 100% sure, I think they are the 6mm ones. Um, these are safety eyes that I do use, but again, as I mentioned, please be aware of sort of who you're making these items for. I have a little bit of toy stuffing here, and this is the hook that I'm using. I'm going to be using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. I don't know if you can see that, and the light might be shining on it a little bit. So I'm going to move stuffing out of the way, and I'm going to move one yarn out of the way. We'll keep him there, we'll keep him there so we can look at him, and I'm going to start with the white. Now, as I say, I've got pen and paper here ready because the pattern is at the side of me. It's not actually written as rough as normal. I did rewrite it out, so I should be able to get it up and running quite quick on the website. Normally, I'm trying to decipher my own writing, which is a nightmare. Just a quick reminder, UK terms. So obviously, if you don't sort of uh, realise they are, the pattern's going to come out a little bit stranger. Amigurumi style. So this is how I start my amigurumi. My dog's just decided to come in. What are you doing? She's too warm. It is too warm here. I know it's not warm compared with some areas, but uh, me and the dog don't do heat very well. So I've done a slip knot onto the hook and we're going to do two chain. One and two. Into the first chain, we're going to do six double crochets. Remember, UK double crochets. So I have one. So it goes in, pulls the yarn through. We have two on the hook, comes through. That's two. You can hear her clattering now. That's it. She's laid down. Three. <laughs> she made the floor sort of tremble then. I'm sure my camera uh, wiggled as well. Five. And I've lost count completely. Let's double check. I always count from the back of the hook. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. I do need another one. I need six. I'm wanting six double crochets into that first chain. Now I'm going to do two double crochets into each of those six. So in we go. So we have one set of two, 
two sets of two, three, four, five, and just one more, and six. I've left the door open. I usually do shut the door with the animals when I'm doing something like this. But the floor in here is like a laminate floor and it's cooler. So uh, she usually sits outside my door. So I'll just let her come in because it's a little bit cooler. So tighten that middle bit up because we don't want a hole there. That won't look very good. And now we're going to do another increase. We have 12 stitches now because we did two double crochets into each of those six, didn't we? So now we're going to do two in the first one, one in the next one. Two, one, two, one, all the way around. So you have six sets of two double crochets in the first stitch, one double crochet in the second. So we end up with 18 stitches there. So off we go. So two in this first one, one in our second. So that's our first set. Two in the next one, one in the next one. That's our second set. We have a two. We have a one that's set number three we have a two we have a one we have a two this should be number five and a one and this should be our last one we have a two now if like me you lose count all the time especially when i'm talking i do lose count you might need to check your stitches now because it will depend on how large your goose is going to come out i need 18 stitches again i start from this end so i've got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 that is what i need so it's always worth checking before you go on to the next bit because the next bit are just going to be straight rounds so that's going to give this part of his head so if you've got too little or too many here it will affect when you do come to reduce later so we're going to have five rounds of one double crochet in each i have my pen i've got a sparkly pen i got these the other day from aldi yeah, i thought they were quite cute so i have to do five rounds so i'm marking down where i'm going i could do with a stitch marker and uh, silly me i haven't got one ready have i so if you're ever stuck i'm sure you'll do the same as me here we need a stitch marker that we haven't got so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a piece of contrasting yarn and i'm just going to pull it through Ta -da! so we've just got it pulled through there now as i say one double crochet in each one times five so we have 18 stitches if you're wanting to count and be exact you count your 18 stitches for each of those five rounds or if you're like me you're just going to use the stitch marker as your base it's only five rounds so it won't make a huge difference at all it won't make any difference sometimes if you do a lot of rounds your stitch marker will need to be moved every so often but for five i'm not going to move it so we're working at the top of his head as i've just shown so uh, it's quite quick to make. Almost room for our first one. One more. And that's round one. So I'm going to mark it off because as I am talking, I will lose track of where I am. Pen and paper is definitely my friend. Although just looking at my desk today, it's driving me mad because I can see bits of it's actually glue. I need to get something that removes glue because we've been making some costumes. Um, there's been various glues on the table, so I do need to work on it. Right. So you can see how this is curling up this way. We need to push it out that way because this is the outside that is the inside it's where your little string is is your inside so it's relatively easy to work out where we are going there oh and i've just gone and pulled my stitch marker out this is why a proper stitch marker is the sensible thing to use and it's not like i have a tin of about 30 plus but uh, i always end up forgetting to put one out in fact the tin isn't even up here you know i think i'm gonna pause and grab myself a decent stitch marker bear with me a second well, here is my stitch marker tin. It also has set my needles on the top. I've just put a pin in my finger there. <laughs> Never mind. I'll survive. So that has got my little magnet on the top. And here is my stitch markers. Like I haven't got enough. So uh, and then I always wonder why I can't find one. What shall we use? I know I'm going to use one of my daughters. 
can you see we've got this one this is one that she designed and created i think these are really cute i do need to get some of these properly on the website for people as well um i think i've got the first collection she did but i don't think i can't remember whether i've got a second section on i must get those on so we're gonna actually use a stitch marker now not a piece of wool because that didn't work so in we go with the stitch marker we did one round I think it's one of them days today. Everything keeps going wrong. So round two, off we go. 18 stitches in each round. Just one double crochet into each one. I will be so glad when the weather cools down. Um, because like I said, I really don't enjoy it. So and when I get warm also, it's, it's, I find it harder. I don't know about you, but I find it harder to crochet when my hands are warm. Perhaps it's just me. <laughs> So this is our round two, nearly drop that one, get back in, there you go. Oh, that's easier with a stitch marker, isn't it? It's not going to knock out at all. So that is round one, so I'm going to just, round one, that's round two even. Dear me, I think perhaps you should. I think you better watch all the video and then come back to the beginning if you're doing this because I'm clearly getting one of those modes where things are going to keep going wrong. Round three we are on. One double crochet into each one. So as I say, we're shaping the top of this little, uh, little goosey's head. Don't forget, if you are a beginner and this seems a little bit fast for you, you can slow it down in the settings i usually find myself if i'm learning something new though is i just watch it and then stop and pause you know every now and then and double check what i'm doing so that's round three mark it down good job i'd marked the other one down wasn't it as i said pen and paper is definitely my friend when i'm working so round four one double crochet into each of the double crochets I don't usually like working with white either as a colour, but obviously it's a little white goose it's got to be, hasn't it? We saw some amazing geese. We went to the seaside the other day um, and there was this area where you could feed the ducks and geese. So many, but they were really friendly because um, I know you do have to be careful sometimes with them, but they were lovely. And so the grandkids thought it was amazing. So that is our round four. We need one more round. See, already we've almost got his head. It's quite a quick make. If you wanted to make him smaller as well, because I'm considering making some tiny ones, um, you could either do it in a four ply with a much finer hook. Or if you want to do a chunky one, you could do a real chunky one uh, with some chunky yarn and a larger hook. That'd be quite cool, actually. I've considered experimenting on different sizes for things like that. So you might see some different bits and bobs in the future. So we are all the way round now, and almost all the way round, we're nearly at the stitch marker. And that is our five double crochet rounds for the top of our goosey's head. So I'm going to mark off the five. And we're actually now going to be starting a little bit of decreasing. We do need to put those eyes in though. So I'm going to put the eyes in now, because obviously the smaller it gets, the harder it is to get the eyes in. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out a second because I need to replace that in a minute. So I'll just pull my yarn along so I'm not going to lose that part. And let's have a look. Now, if you look at this little one, it looks fatter that way it's just because it sort of spreads out. You can see roughly where the eyes are. It's entirely up to you. Do remember, though, you're going to be putting your beak on. So if you want, maybe make your beak first and put it up against it to work out roughly. Something like that, because you don't want to sort of put your eyes on and then find out you can't fit the beak in between. So we need two eyes and we need two backs. So I'm going to place them in first and decide. I think they're going to be about there. Again, it adds character to this, so you can sort of change the positioning. Um, and it's sort of a bit of fun how you can alter the sort of personality of the item you're making. You want to put the eyes closer together, put them lower down, things like that. I think that is approximately, I think they're a little bit wider, but that's the same. That makes him sort of cute, makes him individual. So that is where I've decided they are going. So I'm going to turn this inside out now. 
and we need to put these on now for these particular ones you have to have it dome up that way yep do check on any instructions that you get with these eyes because it's important that you fit them properly so that's in position i usually find two clicks of right for these oh as it doesn't as it slips now one two don't do it too tight because otherwise it pulls in the yarn but you don't want it too loose either so if you're buying a new product that you've not used before you might end up having to experiment a little bit so that just holds it in place then i need two clicks one two lovely so hopefully when i turn it around the right way my eyes won't be too tight or they won't be too loose i'm happy with that yes so you can see in the positioning so we're now going to get on with our decreasing so we're going to work in down the neck area now so there's not many stitches is there to be honest right get that back into position get your yarn back on your hands and we're going to do two together one two together one and we're going to do that six times and that should take us back round. So I will pop the stitch marker back in just to make sure. So two together. So remember, two together, we go in, we pull through. We have two on the hook, but we don't finish the stitch. We go into the next one. We pull it through. We now should have three on the hook. Grab our yarn and pull it through all three. That does make a difference. And then one double crochet. So that's our first decrease. We're going to do our second decrease. So in pull it through in pull it through three on the hook pull it through all three and one so that was our second decrease so i'm going to carry on doing that so this is our set number three keep the de the decreases quite tight as well set number four set number five and we should have enough room for one more set two together and one double crochet that is spot on for me so now we've decreased a little bit and we have 12 stitches so yes we're back to basic double crochet rounds but this time we have seven of them so i'm going to make sure my stitch mark is a little bit higher up because seven rows is quite a few and we will probably keep it in there. If you do want to count, though, remember you've got 12 stitches. My wool's just fallen on the floor. 12 stitches times seven rounds. Off we go. The wool is squeaking a bit on the hook. I don't know whether you can hear that or not. I've still not got a new microphone either. I do need to sort it out. Obviously, if you only been watching my crochet videos you won't know this um i lost my microphone at dollycon and now i need to buy another one well i can't find it anyway i've been through every bag you watch i'm going to buy it and then it'll appear won't it? it usually happens so that's one round the mic it's the phone's quite good at picking my voice up this is second round uh but it the microphone sort of gets rid of any background noises you know, say if the dog decides she's coming in or there's a loud traffic outside. It does help with things like that. So I do need to order one. I need to double check what the last one was I ordered. I'll go back on my eBay orders to find the same one because it was lovely. That other one, it was perfect. Right, that is our second round. Third round. It's a little bit harder to hold when you've got less stitches obviously there so as i said we've only got 12 so it's a little bit fiddlier but you will be actually increasing again after we get past these seven because then we don't need to work towards his tummy you can make the neck a little bit longer if you want i know i was saying you know is it a duck or is it a goose i i think goose but some ducks do have quite long necks but the only thing is the longer you make the neck you've got to be careful when you stuff it because otherwise you could end up with a real sort of floppy neck so you need to make sure your stuffing's quite nice and solid so we are now on round four so over halfway on the neck area that is a yarn caught a bit there it's quite good yarn this it doesn't usually split but uh, it did just catch a little bit there 
and one more for that round so we now have four number five Round we go, remember 12 stitches. See, it is, it's definitely squeaking on the hook. Got squeaky wool. I'm actually going to stop when I get rid of this round to do something. So that is five, because there's here. Is bugging the life out of me. This is the bit here. Now, depending on how tight yours is there, you may want to stitch that in rather than just pull it tight. Mine are usually quite tight, so I'm quite good. So I've just tightened it up and I'm just going to push it inside. Might as well use it as part of the stuffing. Now it's not in my way. So off we go. We need just two more rounds of the 12. We're getting there. Off we go. Oh, it's getting warmer in here. Thing is, because I've got a lamp as well over me to give us good light, uh, that makes it warmer. We're just not used to it here in the UK. I think that's the thing. I know most <laughs> most places in the world will be thinking we're being a bit pathetic, but when you're not used to a heat, obviously it affects you a lot more. So our last round of just one double crochet in each twelve. Off we go. And then we're going to start with a little bit of increasing. Almost there. And I'll say one more there. That will do me. I am going to need to move my stitch marker up. I should have really moved it up about halfway around. But it's up to you what you do with that. If you're used to doing amigurumi, you will find you don't move your stitch marker as much. But if you're not used to it, I can't hold it. What am I doing? There we go. Uh, it's a good idea to move it up every maybe three round, rounds because the rounds do affect the start position because it is rounds. So that will do me there. So I'm just ticking that off and we're going to increase back up to 18 stitches. So we're going to do actually what we did at the beginning. You're going to do two double crochets in the next stitch, one double crochet in the stitch after that. And you're going to do that six times. Give us 18 stitches. So two in this first stitch, one in the second one. Yeah. Two in the first stitch, one in the second one. That's our second set. Two in the first one, one in the second one, that's set number three. We have a two and a one, set number four. We have a two and a one, set number five. And our last set, we have a two, two and a one. I need to reposition the stitch marker because we've just increased and it does make a difference. So there it is. So that's our 18 stitches. Right. We now have just one double crochet round. OK, so just one double crochet into each of those 18. Count if you prefer or just trust the stitch marker entirely up to you. See, it's starting to shape up now. You could actually, if you did a shorter neck, it would definitely be a duck, wouldn't it? So, yeah, you could do it that way. I'm on about lengthening it to make it look more like a goose. Well, if you shortened it, you'd make it more look like a little duck, wouldn't you? Right, I am round. We need another increase round. We're going to go up to 24 stitches with this one. We're going to do two. In our first stitch and then a one and a one so it's going to be two stitches in one and then two individual stitches and that again is times six and it will give us 24 stitches so here we go we have a two in our first one and then we have a one and a one which is set number one so we have a two and then we have a one 
01. So that's two. I'm going to actually mark those down today. So, because when the more it gets in between, it's easier to mark it. So we have a two. We have a one and a one. So that was set number three. We have a two. We have one and one. That was set number four. We have a two. We have one and one. So that was five sets. So we need a two and then a one and a one. Now, obviously, because we've been increasing, your stitch mark is in a slightly different position now. So we need to move it again back to where we started. So we now have 24 stitches and now we get another one light with the neck. We've got to do just double crochet rounds. So we're going to be working on this part of the tummy on him. So we have six rounds. So stitch marker in position. It looks very strange at the moment, doesn't it? Bless him. So off we go with our six rounds, a one double crochet into each of those 24 stitches. I mean, to be honest, we get past his tummy and the rest is an absolute doddle. Um, if you can do this bit, you can certainly do the rest of him. So this is round one. Just checking on in the middle of the camera there. I do have a tendency to pull my work towards me. I do try hard to sort of keep it forward. Um, but it means I sort of crochet in a slightly unnatural position. I don't think it's too bad today. There we go. Almost round for our round number one. And again, pen and paper important. I have so many notebooks. I don't know what you're like. Do you have notebooks for your crochet? I know I certainly do. I've got them all over the place. Every time I go somewhere and I see sort of a pretty notebook, I'm like, I've got to have it. Got to have it. So that was our round one of our six. So you can see the shape coming now. It looks very odd until it's stuffed as well, like with all sorts of soft toys that you're making, uh, until you actually get the sort of shaping with the stuffing. Because the stuffing can make a massive difference. If you overstuff, it can change its shape. If you understuff, you know, it can make the item too soft or too floppy. So stuffing's quite important. The detailing in crocheting, it's not so much doing the crochet so remember this is just one double crochet in each and this is our second round of six uh it's not so much the crochet sometimes that can be the easiest bit i think sometimes the hardest bits are sewing up putting facial details on and definitely getting the stuffing in the right place so there's lots of things to think of there's quite a few skills in there that's probably why a lot of people would rather stay to blankets i love blankets not that I ever get one finished, but I do start them and I plan on making them for my front room and it never happens. So that was round two of our six and we can see how he's sort of shaping into his tummy area now. Off we go again, round three. Might have to have a little drink in a minute because I'm getting a bit croaky, aren't I? Again, I think it is just purely the weather. I don't know. I don't feel poorly or anything. Um, just every now and again, this does it. I say it could be hay fever. I've never been diagnosed with it, really. I have a couple of symptoms, but nothing major. So we're almost round on round three. We're halfway round on round three. Gets a bit weird to hold now because it's a bit of a funny shape. So back to our stitch marker. Now, if you would prefer now, you could move your stitch marker. It might be a good idea. In fact, I'll be good. I'll be good and I will actually move mine as well. Um, when I'm making generally, I don't really move it much. So we'll move it up. In you go. And we have three more rounds of just one double crochet in each. I'm sure some of you have just paused me and you've whizzed off and done your six rounds. and You'll be waiting for me at the other end here. This is why I don't do a particular speed. I don't do things deliberately slow or deliberately fast. I just work at my speed because, as I mentioned, you can alter my speed. My voice sounds a bit silly, though, because it does alter the speed of your voice as well in the settings. If you just look at that little cog 
on your uh, video viewing you can find it and alter sort of the speed and things like that um but as i say it does affect my voice that's the only thing That is round four. We've only got two more to go for this bit. Round four. And then you'll be doing a bit of decreasing, so it's going to get smaller again. As you can see, we're not actually that far off, are we? Right, so what did I say we're on? We're on round five, aren't we? You know, I've just looked at where I've been marking down how many stitches I've done. Normally I do, you know, like you do like a bar, a gate, and you sort of do four lines and then one through it, which is what I normally do. But for some reason, I haven't done that. <laughs> and when I looked across then, I'm like thinking, how many stitches have I done? Or how many rounds have I done? I don't know why I've done that. I've just done like little lines. But this is number five. Nearly there for five. And off with our final round, round six. I'm looking forward to taking him outside, actually, and doing some photos. Um, I've been sort of wanting to, but then I thought, no, I'm not going to take any photos because I know I can't do the video yet. Um, so uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be taking little duck out today to do some photos in the garden. Little duck. I called him a duck then, didn't I? Naughty me. Um, my little goose here and also I'm going to be taking some of the dolls out that I've done on a previous video um, so I'm going to do a little bit of photoing photoing photographing photography we'll get there eventually so this was our last round of just one double crochet into each of those 24 stitches so there we are back to Mr Stitch Marker and let's have a look we're going to be doing two together four double crochet so there's actually only four decreases here so we do need to watch that and bring us down to 20 stitches so two together and then four stitches one two three and four two together Four stitches. One, two, three, four. That was our second set. What have I got there? Got a bit of fluff in there. We have two together. We have four stitches. One, two, three, and four. We have our last set. Two together and four stitches. One, two, three, and last one, four. Okay, so now I want to do just a double crochet round. Well, I say we're nearly there. We're going to be stuffing it in a second. So just one double crochet into each of those 20. My stomach's just rumbled, hopefully again, because I've, not, because I've not got a microphone in like I normally have. You won't hear anything like that, I hope. <laughs> Otherwise you'll be hearing my stomach rumbling. It is towards dinner time, I must admit. Um, because I've been rushing about this morning, I've not had any breakfast either. So uh, my stomach's too and it's time to eat. But it's going to have to wait a little bit longer. So two stitches and we're round. Right, so we now have another double crochet round, but we're only going to crochet into the back loop. You might not particularly be able to appreciate it on here. I'll explain why I've done it as we go. So here we're going to do one double crochet into each back loop stitch. Now you know yourself, you've got your little chains. Let me pull that out a minute. So you've got these chains here and there's like one bit there and one bit there, okay? We're only going to work in that back bit. So can you see there? That's the bit we're working in. It just helps it curve round a little bit under the bottom. So back part. Back part just sort of flattens it off a little bit. 
Oh, my stomach. <laughs> oh, I, I talked over that because my stomach was doing a growl then. Dear me. So one double crochet. It feels a bit weird at first, but you do get used to it. Into each back loop of the stitch. Gives you like a little ridge you'll see in a moment. You don't have to do it. You could get away without doing it. I just feel it sort of flattens it off a little bit. Entirely up to you though. Because he doesn't sit very well anyway because he's a little bit top heavy. Um, because of his shape, it's not an easy one to sit down. But perhaps if you were weight putting, I don't know, perhaps a little weight in his bottom or something like that to make him sit, this little line here would make a difference. Almost round. One more. And we are round. So you can see what we've got here. We're now going to actually just keep decreasing until this space here is completely closed. So I'm just going to take that a second, just pull it out a little bit. So it's just going to be two together, two together, two together, two together until we have sealed. So that means we need to start stuffing now um, because otherwise we're not going to be able to get the stuffing in, are we? So stitch marker out. There we go. And this is the stuffing I use. It is a proper toy grade stuffing. Um, I do like to use sort of the sort of fire safety, etc, etc. So we do need to get right into the head. So don't put too much stuffing in because you put loads in, you'll not get it up into this area. Now I'm going to use my scissors in a second. These are just my long scissors, not my sort of my smaller ones because I can't find them again. Always losing my small scissors. Now also, can you see what's happening there? How it's pushing the safety eyes. What you need to do is then just slightly reposition because it's the stuffing that's just pushed them out of place. OK, now we need a reasonable amount of stuffing in that neck area because otherwise you'll have a floppy neck. So I'm going to put a bit more stuff in. I find just do a little bit at a time. Don't get too sort of over zealous with it and putting loads and loads in. It needs to feel firm. It doesn't need to be over firm. Just sort of that neck area nice and sort of. So to the touch, it feels quite firm. We'll put a little bit in his body. We can't complete that until we've started to fill the hole in a little bit, but we can put a bit more in. Because stuffing gets in the way sometimes when you're decreasing, which is very annoying. Bit of my hair there, dear me. Right, so I'm going to push that down a little bit further than I would need it to be because I don't want it getting in the way. So I'm going to start doing a bit of decreasing and then... Oh, I'm just having a look. Something was stopped. Was it stopped? I don't think it's stopped. I think you're still playing. Uh, there was a telephone call. I think, it, I think it said, actually, if I take the call, it does it. Right, so just two together. And two together. That's all you're going to do. Just two together, two together, two together. Keep it tight, though. Otherwise, you end up with little holes. I have a tendency, I do the two stitches together, like that. And then a little tighten. Because otherwise you can end up with gaps which don't look very pretty. Little tighten. So I'm not really counting. I'm not worrying where I'm going because I'm just going to do the same stitches until the hole is closed. So there's no really need to think about it. I hope filming wasn't stopped. Otherwise we're going to have to start again. <laughs> No, I don't think it is. It looks like it's still functioning. I can't see the time on it because it's upside down. Right, two together. I think we need to put a bit more stuff in it in a second because look, the hole's getting quite small now. And it gets obviously harder to put the stuffing in. It doesn't need a lot more. Can you see he's relatively firm? But I do think I need a little bit more, maybe this much. Use the scissors to push it in because for some reason I find that easier. I don't know why. It just seems to work for me, but whatever system works for yourself. I've got it too much there, I think. Oh, nearly knocked you unconscious then. Are we back? We're back steady. I think that will be enough by the time I've closed it down. So let's carry on going, closing that in. 
Got a very bouncy camera stand, that's the only problem. It's good because it's going over my work easier, but it is done off bounce if you knock it. Sometimes you have to breathe on it and it starts bouncing. It's obviously going to get tighter now as we are working because this hole is getting smaller and it's harder to get in those stitches. But bear with it and get as many as you can because, again, you don't want a hole in the bottom of your goose. Can you see how tight it's getting now? Let's have a look. Now I think we need one more there. And that will do me. I'm going to do a slip stitch in the very last one. And there we go. And I'm going to now trim that off. I've got to make sure my wool don't fall, the rest of my wool don't fall on the floor. Ta -da! Now, this last little bit here, you can darn that with the bit of thread that you've got. But can you see, because of that ridge, how it's sort of flattened it slightly? And that is why I did it. So we have our body. It's actually come out a little bit smaller. I think I've not perhaps done as much stuffing as I did in this guy. I think I overstuffed him, perhaps. But he's still cute. He's still perfect. We're now going to actually, I'm going to turn my page over for my pattern. And we are going to work on the goose's tail next. Now, as you can see, it's just like a little bobble. It's not going to take much doing that one, is it? So let's get that yarn again. Remove the little guys out of the way. So we need, you guessed it, two chain. And then six double crochets into that first chain. So we've got one, two, three, stomach rumble, four, five and six. Okay, so we have six double crochets into that first chain. We do need a slight increase. It's only going to be by three though. So you can have two in the first one, one in the second one, times three. So we need two increase. Well, it's a one increase. It's two stitches in there. Well, well, if I can get in there, where are you going? There we are. So I need two stitches in that first one, one and two. And I need one in the second one. So that's our first increase. So I need two in the next one. And one in the next one. That's our second increase. We do that once more. So we have a two. And we have a one. This now gives us a total of nine stitches. Pull that tight. I'm going to increase again the same system. I'm going to do two in one, but then I'm going to go one, one. So we're only going to have three increases to take us up to 12 stitches. So we have two in that first one. And then we're going to have a one. And a one. So that's our first increase. You're going to do the same for the next one. So we have a two. We're going to have a one. And a one. That's our second increase. We have another one. We have a two. We're going to have a one. And a one. So we now have 12 stitches. And all you're going to do now is one double crochet into each of those 12 and that's it. So here we go. So just 12 stitches. We just count the stitches. We don't need to worry about stitch markers, do we, for that one? That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, last two, eleven. And 12, and I just like to finish with a slip stitch. Up to you whether you do or not. So that was the tail done. That was quick. 
you can make it a little bit longer if you wish you can put stuffing in or you don't put stuffing in you can flatten it you can do what you want with that design you can sort of flatten it off like that if you want to sort of a little flat tail or put a bit of stuffing in it sort of make it i thought i was trying to stabilize it but because oh he sort of does stand i'm saying he doesn't stand he's just stood now um but um it, it's, it's a funny shape really so that would be stitched on in the right place make sure you put all the other features on before you stitch that on because i ended up stitching it on sideways and had to undo it always pay attention to that right so now we're going to go onto the beak so or should we no we're going to finish off with this white yarn aren't we let's get all the white yarn out of the way and we're going to make a little wing and then we can move on to the orange i'm just going to make one wing for you today um so obviously uh, you need to so here we go, we're going to start again, exactly the same, two chain, and then six double crochets into that first chain. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so pull it tight again. We need a bit of an increase, so we do need two in each to give us 12 stitches straight away. So two double crochets into each one. So that's into our first one. That is one. That is two. Three. Four. number five and just one more number six so we now have our 12 stitches okay so just pull that nice and tight and what we're going to do now is a little bit of shaping by doing different lengths of stitches so the first one we're going to do two half trebles in this first stitch now i'll go back to that again half treble just to remind you yarn round in you go pull it through we have three on the hook we pull through all three yeah Yarn round, this is into the same stitch. In, pull it through, pull it through all three. So that was two half trebles in that next stitch. We're now going to do two trebles. Now, yes, we still yarn wrap, we pull it through, but we have three. Remember, for a treble, we pull through two and then pull through two. Another treble in that same stitch. Yep, two trebles in the next stitch as well. Now we need two half trebles in the next one. Remember the half treble is the smaller one, so it pulls through all three. And then just one double crochet in the next one and then a slip stitch in the next one from there. So it just gives a bit of shape. Can you see how it gives us a slightly longer stitch? That's the only reason I pop those half trebles and that in there. So ta -da! that's our little wing. So we have a little wing now. I'm just trying to work out why this one. So I've made this one bigger than this one. I shouldn't have because it's the same pattern. There you go. So that's the wing. We're now going to move on to that beak and feet. So we can move away from our white and we can move on to a bit of colour now. This is what really gives it the kick, I think, this orange. So you've guessed it. Slip knot and on to the hook. Now for the beak, two chain, six double crochets into that first chain one two three four five and six now we're going to do one increase only where it's similar to what we did before where we're going to do two in one one in the next one so it's a bit like the tail so we're going to do two double crochets in the first stitch one in the second and that's our first set okay then we're going to do it again two in the next one and one in the one after that so that's our second increase we need one more of those so two and a one see how it's curving round is a bit of a pain when it does that but we'll straighten that out in a second so just tighten up that middle and i just push it over my little finger so i can sort of 
get it to the right side facing and now we're just going to do one double crochet round and that's it we've just got nine stitches so here we go we have one two three four five six seven eight and one more and nine it's folding out again and i'm just going to do a slip stitch on the, on another stitch to finish it there we go so let's just trim that off I must find my smaller scissors they're huge right now as far as you can see on the beak it looks quite flat because all i've done is when i've stitched it on i've stitched it on that way so you can see how cute that looks so just sort of flatten it a little bit as you stitch it on now the final bit we need to look at is these feet because we need a sort of slightly webbed foot look so this is a bit of a weird one to do um as much as it's not traditionally amigurumi amigurumi does have a lot of detail in that isn't just going round in circles but we do start with two chain but then we're going to do six, oh, six, we're not going to do six, you're going to do three double crochets into that first chain. So we have one, two, and three. So we just tighten that up. Now this is the back of the foot, so you can imagine this is this part. And we're now going to extend out from there. So we're now going to work in rows. So I'm going to do one chain, and I'm going to turn the work, okay? And then I'm going to do two, I'm just having like one double crochet in each one. So I need three double crochets. So we have a one. So we're working along it now. A two. The last one's always really hard to find, but you did do it. As long as you did three on that last one, we've got three there. So that's three. So we're getting like a little tiny weeny triangle, aren't we? Now we're going to do three chain. One, two and three. I'm going to turn my work again and I'm going to do a double crochet into the base. I'm going to do three chain, one, two, three, double crochet into that next stitch. I'm going to do three chain, one, two and three and double crochet into that next stitch. And that is basically it. So you've got your little foot shape there. Oh, it's a little bit harder to sort of see. You can see how the gaps are there. It's just because it's squashed together, that one. So we're going to finish that off there. You might want to watch the feet a couple of times if it's not something you're familiar with. Obviously, that end needs stitching in as well. But can you see, it's almost, it's almost I suppose, if I separate it up, you can see what I did a bit better. Yeah, so you can see it gives you like a little lump, little lump, little lump for the feet. And then obviously, he's got these cute little feet then. So that is basically it. Obviously, we need two feet. We need two wings. We need to sew everything on, which, again, I know some of us love, some of us don't. It's not my favourite thing sewing up. I use sort of quite a small hold darning needle, which is a bit of a pain getting the yarn through. But it gives me a little bit more of a spike to actually position it. In fact, what I might do is I'll just pop the beak on. So let's make sure that's nice and tight because we don't want a hole in his beak. So I'm just going to. Trim that straight off. I've got to move that to one side. So this just leaves me with the beak now. As I say, it's a bit more difficult to get it through the holes, but it's better sort of to have a sharper needle to get your details on. So I usually keep this part where the knot is at the bottom because it's less visible there. Okay. And I'm just going to flatten it like that, roughly where I want it, and pick up the yarn now i have gone all the way around this one so if you look i've not flattened it literally i've just held it and then stitched round it so i'm going to just pick up the outer stitches again i find sewing up really difficult on camera because i have to sort of uh, lean forward which i wouldn't normally You can make his beak as flat or as pointed. Give it, give it a bit of a character. Change it every time you make one. Make it a little bit different because I know mine are going to uh, be slightly different. But I don't mind that. 
I think that's a bit of fun. It gives it character. Uh, I know if I go and buy something, for example, I say there's some soft toys and I'm looking at them. Um, I could look at three or four and some people will argue, well, they're all the same thing. Just pick one up. Um, but no, they're not. <laughs> I think sometimes there's a characteristic to them. So I've just fastened that off. Now I'm going to thread it through the beak because I don't really want to thread orange through the body because it can show. So I'm pushing it through the beak just a couple of times so we don't to come undone and we'll trim it and ta -da! now doesn't that make a world of difference oh they're so cute really really pleased with them so i'm going to carry on finishing him off off video um please pop a comment if there's anything you're not sure about please ask i will try and help if i can um i know some people are really used to doing it some of you'll be beginners so i've got a vast sort of variety of different people so i've got a few ends to sew in i need to sew this one up through his body i need to sew his little tail on and then i need to do another wing so with the wings the bit with the longer stitch I have at the bottom and it sort of curls out a little bit if you do that and then I need another foot and I'm just going to stitch the two little feet in place as well so I hope you enjoyed my little goose I thought he was really cute when I did him uh, he came out better than I thought he was going to come out actually because I just started doing it not really any idea what I was doing I'm thinking oh it, you know it's just for a bit of fun it'll be okay and he turned out gorgeous so that's why I wanted to share him with you so hopefully a lot more to come we've got Christmas gift ideas chocolate orange covers etc etc so please sort of continue to watch if you do enjoy my videos don't forget to like subscribe and share and click on that notification bell I know sometimes there will be dull ones not just pure crochet but I know some of you do both so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon and bye bye for now